Yo, the hell's going on guys? Welcome to your seventh responsive design tutorial and in this video we're going to start styling up our website for tablets. Wow. All right then, so this is the HTML template that we're going to style up for uh, tablets and mobile. So currently I've got open developer tools and I'm just going to use this to make the screen smaller and decide when I want to do my first breakpoint and that point will be when it starts to look a little bit squashed etc okay so at the minute it's about a hundred sorry 1180 pixels in width this viewport and it's still looking all right nothing's looking too squashed I'm just going to carry on and see when it starts to look squashed this is at about 950 does everything look all right yeah everything's looking all right still so let's go a little bit further we'll go down to about 760 something like that um, and now things are starting to look a little bit squashed. It's still looking all right, but these things here start to look a little bit small and squashed together, as are these things down here, and we're running out of room up in the menu. Now, we're currently at about 700 and something pixels, about 760, so something around there, so I'm just going to stick with this one around here, uh, 768 pixels, and that's where I'll do my break point, which is going to target, you know, the, the kind of smaller tablets. Um, an iPad might be a little bit bigger than this, so it's going to see a view similar to this, something like this, which is still okay for an iPad. Uh, but those tablets that are a little bit smaller, that are 600 or 768 pixels in width or less, we're going to make some different styles for those iPads. So let's get to about that break point, which is somewhere there, and start adding some new styles. So the first thing I want to do is bring this navigation onto a new line under here. So we've got the whole width. Uh, and we're not competing for space with this logo over here, and I'm going to centralize this logo above it. That's just going to give these links a little bit more room for the tablets. So what I want to do, first of all, is find out which rules are controlling the styles, um, and it's this now if we want to bring down to the next line. So you can see currently in the style, it's this rule right here, and it's floating it to the right. So I'm going to copy that rule, and I'm going to come down to our breakpoint right there. I'm going to paste it in, and I'm going to override that float, and I'm going to say float none. Okay, so now it's no longer floating over to the right. Now, oops, that's in capitals. Let's get rid of those. Float none. Okay, but we still want to bring it down to the next line. So to do that, I'm going to clear this float here because this is floating to the left, and we need to clear that to bring it down to the next line. So let's clear left, just like that. And then let's give it a width of 100%, just to be sure that it's taking up the whole room. Okay, so now we need to get rid of some of this space right here. And that, I think, is a combination of a few things. It will be the UL here, so we need to get rid of that margin. So we'll do that first of all. We'll say head and nav, paste that in again, UL, and we'll take that margin away from it. And we'll also take the padding away from it as well. Okay, cool. Next thing we want to do is take away some of the margin from the logo and centralize it. So let's find out what rule is controlling that. It's this one right here, h1.logo, and we can see currently it's floating to the left, and we don't want that. And we'll also take away some of that orange margin. If you look on the design, you can see that orange margin. We'll take away some of that as well. So let's go to the style and come down here. This is within our breakpoint again, and we'll paste that rule in. And this time, what I'm going to do is say margin. Now, I want it to be 10 pixels at the top. Then I want to give it an auto margin, left and right. So we're going to centralize it in a minute. And then we're going to give it a margin of zero to the bottom. And we need to get rid of that float. Currently floated left. We want to get rid of that and say float none. And then now it will move into the middle. All right, that's looking a bit better. Um, I also want to centralize these things because currently they're all kind of to the left. So I want to make them full span across the whole width of the, um, the page. So to do that, what I will do is get the li tags within this ul. And then I will float them all left still. Uh, we don't really need to do that because they're already being floated left. So I'll just get rid of that. Um, we'll give them a margin of 10 pixels to the top and bottom, but nothing to the left and right. 
Then there's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. So 100% divided by five is 20%. So I'm going to give them each a width of 20%, like that. And then what I'm going to do is take away the padding, if there is any, just to be sure. And I'm going to align the text. Um, text align to the center just to make them look a little bit better. That's better, they've got more room now. And as we go a little bit smaller, they're not gonna be competing with the logo for room. Cool. All right there, so that is the top part pretty much done. Now, this still looks all right, the banner and these look okay here, but these look a little bit squashed. So I'm just gonna change the width of those. So we'll remind ourselves of the rule in place. It's this featured LI and they've all got a width of 23%, they're being floated left. So we just need to increase this width to double what it is basically. Um, so we'll take that. They've got a 1% margin left and right. So we can move them up to 48% uh, percent in width and they'll still have room for that 1% margin left and right. So let's pop that down here and say width 48% and that should make them twice as big. That's a bit better now. You can see a little bit clearer on your, uh, your tablet what these things are. So that will do for that. And as we get smaller, you can see that's still pretty good for these kind of sizes. All right, next, let's jump down to this footer and these are starting to look a little bit squashed. So we're gonna do the same thing for those. We're gonna make two columns on each row. So these two here are gonna jump to the bottom. So let's find out the style currently controlling this. It's these ULs right here, you can see the footer UL. So I'll grab that rule go back to the sources and come under here. And currently, those footer ULs are 23% in width. Again, we can do the same thing with these. We can make them width 48%. It's gonna bring two for each one. And then just for fun, I'm gonna say text align to center. Give them a bit more breathing room, all right? And that, my friends, will pretty much do for this first breakpoint. That's looking all right for tablets, okay? Everything's still got quite a little bit of room. You've got more room up here. These are bigger. These have got more room down here. And, uh, yeah, so let's have a look. If we bring this back up to the desktop view, first of all, okay, everything's good for desktop. Then as we get smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller, when we hit this breakpoint, seven, six, eight pixels, which is around about now, Everything changes. This changes up here. These change down here and these change down here. So that is the breakpoint. So that is tablets sorted. In the next video, what we're going to do is move on to mobiles and do another breakpoint for things around about this width down here because things start to look squashed again. And we're also going to make at some point a mobile drop down menu. So I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed this so far, don't forget to subscribe to catch all the updates and I'll see you in the next one.